Hello internet gang, my name is Griff Swiger, but you may know me as GriffinPeep123 on Roblox. Today I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks on how to make a map for the official Roblox Death Run. Two of my maps, Jagged Junkyard and Gooey Game Show, have made it into the game, so hopefully I can help with your map submission. Before we begin, I want to give you this disclaimer. Making a death run map is really hard, and it's not for beginner builders. The guidelines and expectations for an official death run map are very strict, so if you're an inexperienced builder, this may not be the first project you want to work on. Also, these tips and tricks won't get your map in the game alone, it'll take your own creativity and talent to score a spot, but this video will hopefully set you on the right track. Now, I'm pleased to introduce Roblox developer and Bloxy winner, Zombity. Hey everyone, this is Zombuddy. I'm the lead map developer in Death Run, and although I've not been active lately, I have been helping out the community with map submissions. Death Run maps require a lot of design effort and time to create, so knowing how to approach map development is very important. We have a Death Run Discord server in which you can find a list of guidelines, but Griffin Peep took it onto himself to make this video to better illustrate what it takes to make a Death Run map. We have accepted both his map submissions so far, so you can take his word. Here are some of the common questions I see being asked about building a map for Roblox Death Run. Is there a map kit? No, there is no official kit nor are the Death Run assets accessible when you build your map. These assets include the buttons, checkpoints, and end teleporters seen in the game. When building a map, create a mock-up model to hold the place of these items. If your map is chosen to be in the game, you will receive the official assets to place them around your map. How do I get my map noticed? Death Run has an official Discord server where you can post images and a place link for your map. The developers are always scanning through, so they will definitely see it. If they like what they see, they'll most likely give you some feedback, which you can use to better your chances of completing your map. I'm active in the server as well, so you may see me from time to time giving feedback as well. Is there a reward? Death Run isn't actively searching for maps to be in the game, but community members should feel free to build a map if they please, but don't expect to get a reward or payment. However, you will be credited and get a special rank in-game and on the Discord server. Here are the official requirements posted in the Death Run Discord server, but I'll be explaining in detail the parts I find most important. Feel free to come back to this list anytime you need, it's a very useful reference. The most important part of a Death Run map is its theme. The theme of the map makes it unique and fun to play. When choosing a theme, make sure to find an original and new idea that hasn't been seen before in Death Run. It's completely okay to take inspiration from other games, and I actually highly recommend this strategy. For example, my map Jagged Junkyard is actually inspired from the map Junkertown in Overwatch. Some common missteps I see beginner map makers doing are picking a theme that is simply an environment or climate. Try to stay away from the Winter Wonderland or Tropical Island themes, for example, as these don't leave enough room for creativity and can seem bland and boring. Bonus fact! Treacherous Taiga, a legacy map from Death Run 2, was not rebuilt for modern Death Run for this very reason. Another good feature to have in your map is a kind of story embedded in the progression. For example, the path the runners take in Castle Fence represents an infiltration. Similarly, in Isla Loca, runners move into a bunker-type area and exit into a processing plan of sorts, telling a story about the purpose of the pipes and machinery seen in the map. Don't forget that you can change the game's lighting properties to better suit your map, as custom lighting makes a huge difference to the look and feel of your map. Finally, as a bonus tip, if you want to judge whether your map's theme is unique enough or not, try to come up with at least five themed traps that could go along with the map. Which brings me to our next topic. Traps are the core of Death Run and the very things that make the maps fun and exhilarating to run through. A standard map should have at least 11 traps. Traps don't have to be super unique, as in many Death Run maps, trap types are reused but it's important to come up with as many new trap ideas as you can, as to further strengthen your theme and make your map stand out. If you're going to reuse a trap idea from another map, which is totally fine, just try to suit it to your theme. A common trap seen in Death Run is a particle emitter trap. This trap is pretty simple, as it's just particles that move into the runner's path, killing any players in the way, but you can do a lot with it. For example, Isla Loca has these fancy slime guns, and my map Jagged Junkyard has a pipe that blows out fire. When designing a trap, keep in mind just how deadly it will be. It's better to make a trap that's easy to bypass than a trap that will guarantee a kill every time. In other words, balance the trap's difficulty. Not too easy, not too hard. 
The first few traps should be designed to take out multiple runners at once, while traps towards the end should be designed to target specific runners. By the way, you will not be required to script your own trap events, but if you know how, you're welcome to. Now, we'll get into how you can lay out these traps, segueing into the next topic. Broken down, a death run map has a runner area and a killer area. The killer area should have a clear view of the runners at all times. This means avoid putting a runner path directly below a killer's area, which is a very common mistake I see, and instead move it to a place where it can be better seen. The killer should have less distance to travel overall, and the two paths typically should not cross. This can be easily done by making the map move in a curve, with the killer's area in the middle. The runner's area contains all the traps. Each trap should have a safe spot in between itself and the next, and it should take between 55 to 75 seconds to run through the runner's path without stopping or cutting corners. Another thing to consider when building your map's layout is segmenting the map. What this means is switch the map up as it goes along. A technique I've learned is to have at least three separate sections in a map. Here is a bird's eye view of Jagged Junkyard, and you can see how it begins outside, moves into an indoor area, outdoors again, into a large warehouse, and exits onto a small bit of land. This is good because the map changes up as you go along, and it's not one long stretch of the same environment. This, of course, can be done in a more subtle way. For example, in this bird's eye view of GUI Game Show, you can see the first and second segments are separated by this wall, and the second and third segments by this castle pass-through. A good rule of thumb is you shouldn't be able to see the end teleporter until you get to the last segment. Avoid using ladders or having places where a player is required to jump where there is no trap. What? The runner's path should be very easy to navigate when there isn't a trap. The direction runners need to go should be obvious, so try to avoid including places where a runner could accidentally go off course. Maps in Deathrun are known for being some of the most detailed and high quality maps in any Roblox game. But with Roblox being a low performance game engine, you'll have to find a middle ground between over and under detailed. Overall, you'll want to limit your part count from around 9,000 to 10,000 parts. To view your part count, you can use a plugin designed for this purpose, of which there are many. I've linked one in the description for the sake of ease. Many of the maps in Deathrun are vast and open, with many objects and assets in the background. You'll typically want to place more objects in the foreground than in the background, because you'll want to place more assets within the play area. You should take into consideration how background assets will be further away, so make things less detailed that are further from the action. I'd like to talk about a specific topic that a lot of people try to argue with me. This is the claim that unioning parts can eliminate Z-fighting and lower your part count. Which is true, however, in the long run, using unions eats up more processing power than using regular parts that could do the same job. Roblox is optimized to thrive on its part system, and unions are a nifty feature, but they do slow things down. Deathrun has a large audience that specifically play on mobile devices, and unions affect those devices even harder. People argue with me all the time about how unions are better, and unions should be used to eliminate Z-fighting. Wrong, sir. Wrong! But you're gonna have to trust me on this one. Only use unions for complex shapes for intricate assets, but don't overuse them. Here's a very juicy bonus tip. You can actually turn a union into a mesh if you right-click a union, hit Export Selection, save it as a .obj file, insert a Roblox mesh part, and upload the previously exported file as the mesh ID. Unlike a union, this mesh can be scaled as big or as small as you want, and it can be stretched without maintaining the size ratio. Meshes also outperform unions in terms of optimization. So if you do make a custom union, I would totally recommend exporting it and importing it to make a custom mesh. More optimization details are listed in the pinned message in the Discord server. There is so much more advice I could give, but this video is really just a ground level standard for all maps. Your individual maps will be very different from each other, so there's a lot of room for error. But if you follow this guide, you should have an understanding on the fundamentals of a Deathrun map. Don't forget that the Deathrun server, linked in the description, is full of helpful people, including myself, who can give you advice on the progress of your maps. Thank you to Zombody for making an appearance in this video, and thank you all for watching. I know I haven't uploaded for a while, but hopefully this video was worth the wait. Good luck on your maps. Good, good, goodbye. Here. Wait, ooh, if I do the cinematic mode and then I hit my one key, I wonder if it'll work. Let's try it. Ooh, it works. Here, I'll just like, I'll follow you around with my camera. Oh, you did not just do that. <laughs>